Writers Guild of America says it does not plan to pick it at this year's Tony Awards. However, WGA members will not write anything in the live broadcast. The move is part of a push for a deal with Paramount to restructure the show to accommodate requests from the WGA. Now, of course, we need to mention that Paramount Global is the parent company of CBS News, and the WGA also represents writers here at CBS News who are not on strike. But while the WGA is allowing the show to go forward, they are not backing down from their position. A statement from the WGA reads in part, responsibility for having to make changes to the format of the 2023 Tony Awards rests squarely on the shoulders of Paramount, CBS, and their allies. They continue to refuse to negotiate a fair contract for the writers represented by the WGA. We reached out to Paramount Global for comment, but have not yet heard back. For more, let's bring in New York Times theater reporter Michael Paulson. Michael, so if the awards show doesn't have any writers, what kind of format can viewers expect to see? And what impact would that have on ratings? Yeah, it's an excellent question. The awards show is now going to go forward. Uh, but as you say, no writers. So that means there will be the presentation of awards and acceptance speeches. And perhaps as important for viewers and for the industry, there will be songs. There will be big musical numbers from the nominated musicals that will be performed live and on air. What there won't be is a new opening number, uh, and there won't be a lot of kind of jokey chit chat between uh, segments of the show. The new opening number, that's once you said that, Michael, I was like, oh, that is always usually. For me, the highlight of the Tonys. Um, tell us what kind of support the Writers Guild is getting from the Broadway community. It's obviously a very delicate balance that folks are striking. Yeah, yeah. So Broadway is also a very unionized industry. Uh, almost everyone who works on Broadway is the member of one union or another. And they've been extremely supportive of the striking screenwriters. There are also, as you probably know, there's a lot of overlap lap between people who work on Broadway and people who work in either television or film, mm -hmm. particularly playwrights. Most of them work in writers' rooms in Hollywood. That's how they get health insurance and uh, earn a living wage because working as a playwriter doesn't um, pay all that well. And a lot of actors work in both mediums as well. So there's a lot of support for the writers, and I think you will hear that expressed on the Tony's broadcast. Now, one thing, Mike, I'm curious is how important is it for the awards to have a, a live broadcast show? I mean, Broadway says the Tonys are absolutely essential to the economics of this industry. That's long been the case. Uh, winning awards is used by shows to market ticket mm -hmm. sales, but even performing songs on the broadcast often moves a lot of ticket sales, but mm -hmm. this has become especially true in the wake of the pandemic. Broadway, of course, was closed for a year and a half. Attendance is still about 17% lower than it was before the pandemic, so Broadway is not fully back. And there was this fear that if the Tonys didn't happen this year because of the strike, that a number of shows would close, mm -hmm. uh, that they need the marketing that they get from being on the air to sell tickets in order to survive. And that's part of why the WGA uh, agreed to this kind of compromise of a writerless broadcast that will allow the award show to go on in some form. Well, Michael, real quick before we lose you, we just need to know who are you predicting is going to walk away from the Tonys with a lot of statues? Sure. I mean, the the musical with the most number of nominations is called Some Like It Hot. It's an adaptation of the classic film. Uh, and the musical that probably has the strongest reviews of the season is called Kimberly Akimbo. It's oh, about so a good. teenage girl with a genetic condition. You saw it. Yeah, of course. Love yeah. Broadway. And I see uh, you're showing pictures of Anne Juliet, which is also nominated in New York, New York, uh, and a country musical called Shucked. Those are the contenders for Best New Musical, which is the prize that has traditionally had the most financial impact. And you got a favorite there? Yeah, we, we, heard a, we heard a list, but come on, Michael. <laughs> Tell our viewers, who do you love? Wow. Uh, I, I think uh, most people are thinking that Kimberly Akimbo is uh, the favorite to win, but it's a little early to make a firm prediction. Most, most people. He, yeah, good journalism you stay, there. You're staying pretty on the sidelines there, Michael. <laughs> Thank you so much, Michael <laughs> Paulson. 
And you can watch the Tony Awards on Paramount Plus. The show will stream live on Sunday, June 11th from 6.30 to 8 p.m. Eastern.